Dear friends, news from the main line has not been good. The fat controller has been having trouble. A short while ago, he gave Henry a coat of green paint, but as soon as he got his old color back again, Henry became conceited. Gordon and James, too, have been getting above themselves. I am glad to say, however, that the fat controller has quite kindly but very firmly put them in their place, and the trains are running as usual. I hope you will like meeting Percy. We shall he hear more of him later. The author. Call Thomas, playing tank engines, sensible engine. Take my advice, scrap your tender and have a nice bunker. Gordon said nothing. Even James laughed when he saw him. Take care, his Gordon, you might stick too. No fear, chuckled James. I'm not so fat as you. I mustn't stick, thought James. He stopped on just the right place to, to balance the table. It could now swing easily. Gordon arrived in time to see everything. James turned much too easily. The wind pumping round like a top. He couldn't stop.
that night, the three engines had an indignation meeting. It's shameful to treat tender engines like this. Gordon has to go backwards, and people think he's a tank engine. James spins round like a top, and everyone laughs at us. And to add to that, a top of hat makes us all shunt in dirty sidings. Listen, said Gordon. He whispered something to the others. We'll do it tomorrow. Sir Topham Hat will look silly. The engines have decided to go on strike. <laughs> Sir Topham Hatt sat in his office listening to the noise outside. The passengers were angry. The station master came in. There's trouble in the shed, sir. Henry is sulking, there's no train, and the passengers are saying this is a bad railway. Indeed, said Sir Topham Hatt. We cannot allow that. He found Gordon, James, and Henry looking very cross. Come along, Henry, it's time your train was ready. Henry's not going, said Gordon. We won't shunt like little tank engines. That was Thomas's job. We are important tender engines. You fetch our coaches and we will pull them. Tender engines don't shunt. We'll see about that, said Sir Topham Hatt. No engine on my railway is too important for small jobs. And he hurried away to find Edward. The yard has never been the same since Thomas left to run his branch line, he thought sadly. Edward was shunting. Leave those freight cars, please, Edward, said Sir Topham Hatt. I want you to push coaches for me in the yard. Thank you, sir. That will be a nice change. That's a good engine. Off you go, then. So Edward found coaches for the three engines, and that day the trains ran as usual. Next morning, Edward looked unhappy. Gordon came clanking past, hissing rudely. Bless me, said Sir Topham Hatt. What a noise! They all hiss me, sir, answered Edward. They say tender engines don't shunt, and last night they said I have grey wheels. I haven't, have I, sir? No, Edward, you have nice blue ones, and I'm proud of you. Tender engines do shunt. But all the same, we do need another tank engine here. He went to a workshop and they showed him all sorts of engines. At last he saw a smart little green engine with four wheels. That's the one, he thought. If I choose you, will you work hard? Oh, sir, yes, sir. That's a good engine. I'll call you Percy. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, said Percy. And Sir Topham Hatt brought him back to the yard. Edward, he called. Here's Percy. Will you show him everything? Percy soon learned what he had to do, and they had a happy afternoon. Then Henry came by, hissing as usual. When Percy, Henry jumped and ran back to the shed. How beautifully you weeshed him, laughed Edward. I can't weesh like that. Oh, said Percy, that's nothing. You should hear them in the workshop. You have to weesh loudly to make yourself heard. Next morning, Thomas arrived. Sir Topham Hatt sent for me. I expect he wants help, he said to Edward. Shh, shh, here he comes, replied Edward. Well done, Thomas. You've been quick. Listen, Henry Gordon and James are sulking. They say they won't shunt like little tank engines. So I have shut them up and I want you both to run the line for a while. Little tank engines indeed, snorted Thomas. We'll show them. And Percy will help too. Oh, sir, yes, sir. Please, sir, answered Percy. Edward and Thomas worked the main line, greeting each other as they passed by. Percy puffed along the branch line. Thomas was anxious about Annie and Clarabel, but both driver and conductor promised to take care of them. There were fewer trains, but the passengers didn't mind. They knew the three other engines were having a lesson. 
Gordon, James, and Henry were cold, lonely, and miserable. They wish now they hadn't been so silly. Henry, James, and Gordon were miserable. They had been shut up for several days for being naughty and longed to be let out again. At last, Sir Topham has arrived. I hope you are sorry, he said, and understand that every job on the railway is important. We have a new tank engine called Percy, who helps pull coaches, and Thomas and Edward have worked the main line nicely. But I will let you out now if you promise to work hard. Yes, sir, said the three engines, we will. That's right, but please remember that this no-shunting nonsense must stop. <laughs> He then told Percy, Edward, and Thomas that they could go and play on the branch line for a few days. And they ran off happily to find Annie and Claribel at the junction. The two coaches were so pleased to see Thomas again. Edward and Percy played with freight cars. Stop! Stop, stop, screamed the cars as they were pushed into their proper sidings. But the two engines laughed and went on shunting till the cars were tidily arranged. Next, Edward took some empty cars to the quarry. Percy was left alone. He didn't mind that a bit. He liked watching trains and being cheeky to the other engines. Hurry, 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 he would call, and they got very cross. After a great deal of shunting, Percy was waiting for the signalman to set the switch so that he could get back to the yard. He was eager to work, but was being rather careless and not paying attention. Edward had warned Percy, be careful on the main line, whistle to the signalman, you are there. But Percy didn't remember to whistle, so the busy signalman forgot him. Percy waited and waited. The switch was still against him, so he couldn't move. Then he looked along the main line. He whistled in horror, rushing straight towards him was Gordon with the express. station and was so frightened that he ran right up Gordon's Hill without stopping. After that he was tired, but he couldn't stop. He had no driver to shut off steam and apply the brakes. I want to stop, I want to stop, he puffed. The man in the signal box saw Percy was in trouble, so he kindly set the switch. Percy puffed wearily onto a nice empty siding, ending in a big bank of earth. He was too tired now to care where he went. I want to stop, I want to stop. I have stopped, he puffed thankfully. Never mind, Percy, said the workman as they dug him out. You shall have a drink and some coal, and then you'll feel better. Presently, Gordon arrived. Well done, Percy. You started so quickly that you stopped and asked the accident. I'm sorry I was cheeky, said Percy. You were clever to stop. Then Gordon helped pull Percy out from the bank. The two engines are now good friends, but Percy is always most careful when he goes on the main line. Thomas the tank engine puffed happily along his branch line with Annie and Clarabelle. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting on the platform. He looked at his watch. 
Well done, Thomas. You are right on time and really reliable. Thank you, sir, whistled Thomas. Ooh, right on time and really reliable, hummed the coaches. But the big engines were not feeling cheerful at all. Where's Percy, mumbled Henry. He's supposed to fetch our coaches. We get no rest, complained James. He edged angrily onto the turntable and spoke rudely to Henry. What's the matter, Henry? There's no rain today. Stop worrying and do some work instead. I'm not afraid of getting wet anymore, huffed Henry. Anyway, you look silly enough to be a clown. You should join the circus. Oh, whistled Percy. So you've heard the news? What news? About the circus. Percy, what are you talking about? The circus has arrived, explained Percy. I've been shunting special cars. Sir Topham Hat needs your help, too. The engine soon forgot to be tired and cross. Until it was time for the circus to leave. Then Gordon and Henry were cross all over again when James got to pull the train away. A little later, Sir Topham Hatt returned. Come along, Henry. A tunnel is blocked down the line. You must take some workmen to investigate. Pushing cars, grumbled Henry. They stopped outside the tunnel. The workmen went inside. It was very dark and quiet, but not for long. Help! shouted the workmen, and they ran out. <laughs> We started to dig at the block, but it grunted and moved, one said. Rubbish, said the foreman. It's not rubbish. It's big and alive. We're not going in there again. Right, said the foreman. I'll ride in the cars and Henry shall push it out. Weesh, said Henry unhappily. He had been shut in the tunnel for being afraid of the rain, but this was worse. Something big and alive was inside. Peep, peep. I don't want to go in. Neither do I, said his driver, but we must clear the line. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Puffed Henry. <laughs> then there was trouble. The block was indeed alive and very strong. It began to push the train backwards. Out of the tunnel came Henry. Then the cars... Last of all, a large cross elephant. Well, I never, cried the foreman. The workman gave him some cake. He drank three buckets of water and was just about to drink another when Henry let off steam. Cried the elephant. Water went all over Henry. Poor Henry. The elephant and his keeper were soon reunited, but Henry was most upset. An elephant pushed me. An elephant hoshed me. That night, he told the other engines all about it. Gordon and James felt sorry for Henry, but still teased him. First the rain, then an elephant. Whatever will you be afraid of next? Never mind, Henry, murmured Thomas. I think you were brave today. And really reliable, too. Where is the moment we needed the most? You kick up the leaves and the magic is lost.